Today, we are inside the brand new 2024 BMW X5 M60i. That means we got the V8 power. Now we have these completely redesigned interior, curved display screen, iDrive 8, massive amount of carbon fiber trim on the inside. We're gonna hop outside, do a exterior walk around of this vehicle. Then we'll get inside and we'll go for a good old fashioned POV drive. Now on the exterior of this vehicle, this is the Brooklyn gray exterior. This is a pretty much fully loaded excellence package, M Sport Pro package, $1,000 upgraded black 742 wheels, red M Sport brakes. We have the redesigned front end, new kidney grill slats, new front bumper content, new headlights, and underneath the hood, this is BMW's new S68 engine. So compared to BMW's previous one, which was the N63 engine, it's more fuel efficient, has the 48 volt mild hybrid technology system, but it's still the same power of 523 horsepower. We also have the M mirror caps on this model. You can see the M60 badge down there. Rear windows are tinted in from the factory. New redesigned taillights. This one also has the trailer tow hitch. Chrome badges now for the X5 and the M60 instead of the cerium gray from last year. Trunk space. I love the dual tailgate design split here. This privacy cover can come forward, connect here. You can also disconnect it and store it away down here. And you also have that additional storage. When you're ready to close, button at the top, and it closes both of them. Taking a look at the back seats, this is the black merino leather, travel comfort seats for the front, merino leather at the back, rear zone climate control and rear heated seats, massive panoramic glass sunroof. This is also the Sky Lounge one, so it's gonna have the LED lights built into the sunroof. Opening animation for iDrive 8. We also have a push button start right down here. This is the glass application shifter, new transmission shifter. Now we just toggle down and we're in drive. This is an interesting note. Engine power is reduced for a run-in of 500 kilometers. So we are going to avoid all pedal push downs, full throttle accelerations on this drive. We're gonna go for a good feel, get a good feel for this new V8 power plant. But yeah, so we have reduced engine power until we hit 500 kilometers. I don't believe that was a thing with the last V8 BMW because the N63 was not an S motor. So this is now an S motor and we have a 500 kilometer run-in period that never used to be there. Good acceleration, I mean, grunty V8. We're probably using like 30% of the power or something. I'm gonna show you guys the infotainment screen as we drive, we'll get stuck in a little bit of traffic. We're gonna head towards the highway so we can get a little bit of open throttle acceleration feel. Now, right now we're in eco mode. We also have comfort mode and we have sport mode. Sport, sport plus, and sport individual. Now you do, can use the touch screen to go through stuff, but you also have the iDrive controller here. So you can do that while you're driving. I find the iDrive controller is better when you're driving. Touch screen is better when you're sitting still and you can lean forward because it's a little out of reach when I'm sitting back into my seat. We also have the head up display projection here. I'm gonna go around in comfort mode. Now one thing that I like with iDrive 8 is you can customize your gauge cluster. Oh look, you can even see on your gauge cluster, RPMs above 4,000 are actually blocked off. So you can't even experience that full power above four and a half thousand RPM. So customizing the gauge cluster, you click this button right here and you can adjust the content that you see in between the speed and the RPM, the center. Personally, I like the map content, but you can also adjust the layout. This one is only available with comfort. So I like putting it on that one because as soon as you go eco, you're getting this gauge cluster no matter what. And as soon as you go sport, you're getting this one no matter what. Wow, sport mode makes a big difference. Go back to comfort mode there. And reduce map view. You can also customize your head up display. So third one over the right, standard view, directional view, 
assisted view, sport view. I'm just gonna leave it on the standard view. It does change for when you go into sport mode, you get the sport view no matter what. And eco mode, you get this like eco bar. Let these uh, nice pedestrians go through. You can't go to a sidewalk apparently. Crosswalk. Now the curved display screen iDrive 8, you have a lot more custom ability. The touch screen's a lot more responsive. This is what the main menu looks like here. You can configure these widgets and realign the tiles of where you want. Now one thing that has changed, you no longer have the climate control menu here because it's put into the touch screen. Quite a lot of options. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. These allergies are killing me, but climate control menu is put in. Heated steering wheel button is gone. I'm not quite sure why. I feel like they could have left heated steering wheel button here. It would be nice if the heated seat buttons are left here, but I guess you're only using them in the winter time, not in the summertime. <coughs> oh my gosh. Sneezing out of control here. We have ventilated seats, which are on high right now, and we can set the temperatures. One thing that I wish they left is we have the max defrost at the front and rear defrost physical buttons down here. I wish they left us a max AC button because in order to do max AC, every time you get in the car, it asks you, it gives you a warning about using the infotainment system while driving. So you have to hit OK, and then you have to hit climate menu, and then you have to hit AC. So in order to get max AC in the summertime, you have to go through three buttons in order to get max AC engage versus the last BMW, you could just click one button and engage right away. So while the iDrive 8 I find is very improved with touch screens and you know configuration and everything like that there are a couple drawbacks touch screens are very responsive i like this one because uh this is your menu so instead of going like uh car settings and dropping through just everything is an app and you can either do infotainment apps like apple carplay android auto satellite radio fm radio navigation or you can go to vehicle apps your bmw ids your seat comfort driving settings doors and windows interior lighting you can go through all of those i love the new ambient lighting but the one thing about ambient lighting is you can't change it if you're an eco or sport you only get your ambient lighting now in comfort mode versus the last iDrive 7 your ambient lighting stayed the same no matter which mode you went into but now when you go sport mode watch it goes red along here along here the led lights in the sunroof ambient lighting along here go back to comfort and now we can adjust the color and you can select like 15 different colors like four shades of blue three of them right here and then a turquoise there's emeralds i like the turquoise the best and we got a green light so we're gonna do a comfort mode acceleration i mean still excellent pickup with the reduced power of this v8 sounds great and we're only in comfort mode road noise is great this one does have the adaptive M suspension, not the air suspension. It's very comfortable in the comfort mode. On the left side of the door panel, you have your central door locks, your window controls, memory seat seats, massaging seats, L2. You can even adjust the seats in the passenger side. All right, we're gonna flip it over into sport mode. Instant power pickup right away. Our RPMs are still blocked off. We're gonna get onto the highway, get a little bit up to speed for you guys. Going over a pretty rough road and the suspension's super comfortable. We do have the 22 inch low profile sport tires with performance summer tires. So I know that we're gonna have good grip and handling going into corners, but we're still in a very large SUV. You can feel the body roll, but for this size of vehicle, it's really not that much. Car sounds good. Good acceleration. Trust those M Sport brakes. You can tell the car can definitely handle going into these corners much faster than it is if you're really pushing it. I want to test out the cruise control while we're getting on the highway here. So we'll merge into traffic. And let's turn on the cruise control. Set the speed, set it at 100. Assistant driving active, so it's keeping our, our lane centered. 
Now, I'm not sure if this one has the advanced driver's assistance package, which is going to give us the hands-free. Doesn't look like it. Mode. Looks like it's just the normal ones. It'll be hands-free under 60 kilometers, but over 60, got to keep at least one hand on the steering wheel. All right, well, traffic is starting to ease up a little bit, so we're going to sport mode. Still a little bit of an Excel pull here. I mean, even maxing out at 4,000 RPM sounds great, accelerates quickly, and I'm only using about 50% of throttle. There's even a Sport Plus mode. Now, Sport Plus mode is just more aggressive on the RPM. It's gonna hold the RPMs longer before it upshifts. So you see it's staying right at 3,500, get back onto it. Not doing it until it accelerates and shifts up. And there's a lot of customization that you can do. Like, let's see, we'll go to displays instrument client panel you can configure the content that you can see we'll add it in the converted speed for anybody in america is watching don't worry we weren't doing 100 miles per hour here on the canadian highway we're just doing 100 kilometers per hour man this is a these seats are very very comfortable even with the sport suspension sport wheels it's still very comfortable there's barely any road noise X5 is such a large SUV as well. I would love to drive this vehicle once it's had its 500 kilometer break in period. So we could really feel what this engine has for us. See that steering intervention was pulling me back from fading out of my lane there. We're going to try the cruise control again. So we're on assisted driving, so it's keeping us centered in the lane. That car slowing down. We're slowing down. Doing the lane change for us just by putting on the turn signal. That's pretty cool. Another thing we have is iconic sounds. So you go into sport mode, hear that acceleration. Well, what if we tap iconic sounds? A little less acceleration pumped in through the speakers. I like to leave it on there. Handling feels very firm through the corner. Okay, so we did some highway driving, got a feel for the road noise, the road handling, the engine. Now let's just play a little bit around with the infotainment system. So you have your BMW driver IDs. This is absolutely beautiful, especially when you have more than two people driving your car. Everything will save to your driver profile. As soon as that secondary driver comes in with their driver profile, they hit the unlock key, everything switches over. Down to like the climate control temperature, the safety system, the mirrors, the seats, absolutely anything that you can adjust in the settings will switch over so you don't have to worry about messing up settings. Adding in mobile devices, your personal assistant, so you can say, navigate me to the nearest service center. You can see in the head-up display what it hears from you. Hmm, I wanted a BMW one. Take me to Parkview BMW. You can see it popping up there. It's pretty cool. Try one more time. Take me to Parkview BMW. Okay, I will have the results for you soon. There we go. Pulls it up. Show you guys the navigation the system with I drive eight. Turn left. The expected drive time is four minutes. So you can see it pops up over here, massive map screen. You can also see it in the gauge cluster and it would be in the head up display. We'll change the head up display to 
Oh no, it'll show up when we get to the corner. That's when it shows up in half display. In 400 meters, there we go. Left onto I can see it. East. Personally, I find uh, I, f I don't like the the navigation spoken instructions, so I always just turn that off there. You can see the augmented reality coming in there. That's fantastic. Really lets us know where we need to be turning. We have this massive panoramic sunroof. Control is right here. Just click it forward once. That rear sunshade will close. You have your SOS button for calling roadside assistance. Down here, you have heated and cooled cup holders. A wireless device charging tray. You can just tuck that back closed. Glass application for your shifter. We have automatic brake hold, so feet are off the brakes. Nice tri-color stitching on the M Sport steering wheel. We have these lights here, which uh, will go green or red or orange, depending on what system you're using and what warnings it needs to give you. My back in a suit is even cold because of the ventilated seats. Such a comfortable car. Yeah, just to finish up showing you guys the iDrive 8 system. So then you have seat comfort. You can go in and adjust seat positionings, climate control settings, seat our operation tips. You have live vehicle. So this changes so right now. We're in eco mode. This changes between comfort. And sport. See, engine torque, horsepower, turbo PSI, and engine temperature. You can go into your system settings. So this is where you're going to find uh, you know, automatic time settings, the language settings, voice control settings, interior lighting I showed you guys earlier. There is an owner's manual. You can go in for any keyword searches. Climate control menu, same thing as clicking that, that button down there at the bottom of the screen. Displays we are in before doors and windows so one thing I love is the proximity setting for unlocking and locking the doors automatically you can even get a digital key that you can put into your Apple wallet once you've linked your driver's ID and go more into those driving settings so driver's assistance pre-collision lane departure warning blind spot inter blind spot monitoring steering intervention fatigue alert emergency stop steering wheel via feedback when the trailer hits you even get the trailer mode in this as well what is happening here? Exterior lighting, parking, and vehicle status. So this car does have the brand new parking assistant professional with BMW. So it will self park the vehicle for you better than it ever could before. When we get back to the dealership, I'm gonna show you guys that feature. We'll take a look at it. Show you guys how this car automatically parks. Now with the old BMW systems, it would just do proximity off of the car beside you that you're going to the parking spot. Now it actually registers the parking spots via the lanes and shows you exactly where it's gonna park you. And the parking assistant also pops up in the gauge cluster. So it's a little easier to use than the last system. That's pretty much it with iDrive 8. And you know, you have music, your phone, navigation, pretty much everything with the, the iDrive 8 system. I think we've covered everything. Just enjoy a little bit of the end of the drive until we get back to the dealership. Once again, if you guys are in the Toronto marketplace and you're looking to purchase a BMW, please reach out to me at Parkview BMW. Thank you to Parkview BMW for providing the test drive vehicle for today's video. So even if you don't reach out to me, if you're wanting a BMW in the Toronto marketplace, make sure you come out to North York, visit Parkview BMW. Their dealership is just around the corner here. Beautiful, right across from the parkway. So thank you, Parkview BMW, once again. Don't forget, if you guys made it all the way to the end of my video, please smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out tremendously with YouTube's algorithms. Now we're gonna pull into the dealership here, and I'm gonna show you guys, look at that. The address pops up in the augmented reality. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna show you guys the self-park function for this vehicle. So if you're driving along, and you're reversing, or you're parallel parking, and you want help in order to get into that spot, Here's what you do. Drive along the row of cars. Stay pretty close to the line. So we're gonna stay over here. This car is coming ahead of me. I don't know what he's doing. Can you please go, sir? Thank you. 
Okay, so you drive along. Drive along your row of cars here. Now we got two of them spots here. So after you pass your row of spar cars, you come down here and click this P button. Then it's gonna start sensing. And you can already see found a reverse parking spot right here. We just click in that or we tap over here. And you can even select which parking spot you wanna go into. And then it takes over. So you can see the parking spot it plans to put us into. You can see our vehicle proximity to that spot right now. How close are we to getting in? You can see everything over the ca cameras. We have green lights, takes over the steering, takes over the gas, takes over the brake, and it puts you into that parking spot. So I'm going to end the video here. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you guys smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys with the future POV videos. Let me know in the comments what you think I can improve or what you liked about the video, and thank you so much.